sing Joe's Alleluia, praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon, Alleluia, praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens, Alleluia, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, Alleluia, for he commanded and they were created. He has ordered and they were created, Alleluia, he has established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which shall not pass away. Way, alleluia, praise the Lord from the earth. You, you great sea creatures and all the depths, alleluia, fire and hail, snow and clouds and stormy winds, fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, alleluia, fruitful trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, alleluia, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all people, alleluia, princes and all judges of the earth. Both young men and maidens, alleluia, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, alleluia, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, alleluia, and he has exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints, alleluia, the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Alleluia, 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 sing to the Lord a new song, alleluia, and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker, alleluia, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the chorus, alleluia. Let them sing praises unto him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people, alleluia. He will raise the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory, alleluia. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, alleluia. And a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance on the nations, alleluia. And punishments on the people. To bind their kings with chains, alleluia, and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the written judgment, alleluia, this honor have all his saints. Alleluia, 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 praise God in all his Saints, alleluia. Praise him in the firmament of his power, alleluia. Praise him for his mighty acts, alleluia. Praise him according to the multitudes of his greatness, alleluia. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, alleluia. Praise him with sultry and harp, alleluia. Praise him with strength and chorus, alleluia. Praise him with strings and organs, alleluia. Praise him with pleasant sounding cymbals, alleluia. Praise him upon the cymbals of joy, alleluia. Let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord our God, Alleluia. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. 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 Glory to you, our God. Alleluia. Uh, uh. 
Jesus Christ, our true God, gave us sign to his servants, my lords and fathers, the apostles, all the perfect help. Through his strength he bound them with. He gave them authority to preach in the world. For he has chosen them and filled them with all understanding. And he sent and commanded them, saying, Go to all places. David taught us in his books. He gave us his testimonies that the Lord gives strength to those who preach his name. Who among the wise truly have explained, speaking of your blessedness, O my lords and fathers, the apostles, truly he spoke in truth. The Lord promised, saying, O you who were patient with me in my tribulations. Behold, I firmly establish a covenant with you, where you will sit in my kingdom, true and holy thrones. You will sit upon and you will judge the men of all generations. From the east to the west and from the north to the south, confirm the elect and restore the impious. The Lord is the Messiah. He has chosen his apostles, who are Peter and Andrew, John, John, and James, and Philip, and Matthew, Bartholomew, and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the Canaanite, Matthias, who was chosen instead of Judas, and was counted with the rest who followed the Master. Peace, Christ Emmanuel has chosen and ordered, saying, and go to the sheep, the lost ones of Israel, adorn them with the splendor of the holy baptism in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And heal the sick, cast out the demons, remedy the ill with perfect strength, the eternal authority in heaven and on earth to loose and to bind. I shall give you with power. Incline your ears in firmness to the meek man, which the king has granted to judge in retribution. Listen, for their voices went out onto the face of the whole world, and their words have reached into the hearts of everyone. Then our mouth will not weary to praise you, and our tongue will not cease to magnify you. Your names and your remembrances is on the mouth of the faithful. They save them from the thoughts of the devil. O Father of compassions, have mercy through their prayers. Through your patience, save us from snares. Forgive us our iniquities, O eternal one with a beginning, and through their intercessions, both now and forever. The rest of our days in your strength guard us, deliver us from the evil, and your faith confirm us. O our Lord Jesus Christ, for your chosen apostles, remember the poor, and count us with the faithful. And whenever we sing, let us say tenderly, Our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon our souls. Lord, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of the ages. Of Amen. O chaste and undefiled, holy in everything, who brought God to us, carrying her in her arms. The whole creation rejoiced with you, proclaiming and saying, Hail to you, O full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Hail to you, O full of grace. Hail to you who has found grace. Hail to you who has given birth to Christ. The Lord is with you. We praise your greatness, O the wise virgin, and send unto you greetings with Gabriel the angel. For through your fruit salvation came to our race, and God has reconciled with us once again through his goodness. Hail to you, O full of grace. Hail to you who has found grace. Hail to you who has given birth to Christ. The Lord is with you. As an undefiled chamber, the Holy Spirit came upon you, and the power of the Most High overshadowed you, O Mary. You bore the true word, the Son of the Eternal Father, who came and saved us from our sins. Hail to you, O full of grace. Hail to you, who has found grace. Hail to you, who has given birth to Christ. The Lord is with you. You are the race and descendant of David. You bore to us according to the flesh our Savior Jesus Christ. The only begotten of the Father before all ages. He emptied himself and took the form of a servant for our salvation. Hail to you, O full of grace. Hail to you who has found grace. Hail to you who has given birth to Christ. The Lord is with you. You became the second heaven on earth, O Mother of God, for the Son of Righteousness shown to us from you. You bore him according to the prophecy, without seed or corruption. He is the creator and the word of the Father. Hail to you, O full of grace. Hail to you who has found grace. Hail to you who has given birth to Christ. The Lord is with you. The dome which is called the Holy of Holies, which contains the ark, overlaid with gold from every side. Wherein are the tablets of the covenant and the golden vessel where the manna was hidden? Is the symbol of the Son of God who came and dwelt in the Virgin Mary, the unblemished, and took flesh from her. She gave birth to him, to the world. He is united without separation, for he is the King of glory. He came and saved us. Blessed are you, and
Say. Have mercy upon us, O God the Father, the Bond Creator, O Holy Trinity, have mercy upon us, O Lord God of hosts, be with us, for we have no helper in our tribulations but you. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Christ Jesus our Lord, thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In Christ Jesus our Lord. I have sinned, forgive me. Let us pray. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the beneficent and man. Merciful God, the Father of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us. Us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the day. Of our life. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior. Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in every thing. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Pray that God may have mercy and compassion on us, hear us, help us, and accept the supplications and prayers of his saints for that which is good on our behalf at all, all times, and to keep the life and standing of our honored Father, the Archpriest Pope of Atoandros II, and his partner in the liturgy, our Father, the Bishop of Yusuf, and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. The can entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men and the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from
ഓം ഓ and from this church and from this you or holy place but those things which are good and profitable do provide for us for it is you who have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy Lord of mercy, we worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Holy and Co-Essential Trinity. Hail to the Church, the House of the to the virgin who gave birth to our savior hail to you o mary the fair dove who was born to us god the logos hail to you confirm him on his throne and his partner in the liturgy our holy and righteous father of all you sit the bishop confirm him on his throne through the intercessions of the theotokos Hey Mary, O oh Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins that we may praise you. With your good Father and the Holy Spirit, for you have risen and saved us, have mercy on us. Send up for prayer. And with your spirit. Again, as God come to Christ, to the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask and treat you goodness for love of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the souls of your servants who fall asleep, our fathers and our brethren. Pray for our fathers and our brethren who have fallen asleep and repose in the faith of Christ since the beginning. Our holy fathers, the archbishops, our fathers, the bishops, our fathers, the hegemons, our fathers, the priests, our brethren, the deacons, our fathers, the monks, and our fathers, the laymen, and for the full repose of Christians, that Christ our God may repose all their souls in the paradise of joy, and we too accord mercy unto us and forgive us our sins. Bless you, o Lord, repose all your souls in the bosom of our Holy Father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sustains him in the green pasture, besides the world in the paradise of joy. The blaze.
face out of which grief, sorrow, and gloom are further away in the light of your sins. Praise observe, brothers, also on the day which you have appointed according to your true promises, which are without lie, grant them the good things of your promises, that which an eye have not seen, nor ear, neither have come upon the heart of man, the things which you, God, have prepared for those who love your holy name, for there is no For your servants, but a departure, even if in or illness has overtaken them as men, since they were clothed in flesh and dwelt in this world. O God, as the good one of our mankind, graciously accord, O Lord, to repose and forgive them, your servants, those those Christians who are in the whole world, from the east to the west, and from the north to the south, each one according to his name, and each one according to her name. For no one is pure and without blemish, even though his life on earth be a single day. As for those who Lord, those souls we have taken, repose them and may be worthy of the kingdom of heaven. As for us, O oh, grant us our Christian perfection, that would be pleasing to you and gives him and us a share and inheritance with all your sin. Lord of mercy. Graciously accord, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and exceedingly blessed and glorified be your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us according to our hope in you. For you give of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the regions of the earth. And you, O Lord, keep us safe from this generation and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord, make me to understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, enlighten me with your righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Despise not, O Lord, the works of your hands. You have been my refuge from generation to generation. I asked the Lord and said, Have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I fled unto you. Save me and teach me to do your will. For you are my God, and with you is the fountain of life. In your light shall we see life. Let your mercy come unto those who know you, and your righteousness unto the upright in heart. To you belongs blessing, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now and forever and ever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praise unto your name, O Most High, to show forth your mercy every morning and your righteousness every night. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who was born of the Virgin, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who was crucified for us, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who rose from the dead and descended into heaven, have mercy upon us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of the ages, amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, forgive us our sins. O Lord, forgive us our iniquities. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. O Lord, visit the sake of your people. Heal them for the sake of your holy name. Our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep. O Lord, repose their souls. O you who are without sin, Lord, have mercy on us. O you who are without sin, Lord, help us and receive our supplications. For yours is the glory, the dominion, and true holiness. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, amen. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, amen. Hail to you, we ask you, O saint, full of glory, the ever-Virgin, the Theotokos, the Mother of Christ. Lift up our prayers unto your beloved Son, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to the Holy Virgin, who has brought forth unto us the true light, Christ our God. Ask, Ask the, the Lord on our behalf that he may have mercy in our souls and forgive us our sins. O Virgin Mary, the Holy Theotokos, the faithful advocate for all mankind. Intercede on our behalf before Christ whom you bore, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to you, O Virgin, the right and true Queen, hail to the pride of our race, who bore to us in man and you we ask you to remember us so our faithful advocate before our 
our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. The adornment of Mary in the highest heaven, at the right hand of her beloved, entreating him on our behalf. As David has said in the book of Psalms, the queen stood at your right hand, O king. Solomon has called her in the song of songs, my sister and my spouse, my true city, Jerusalem. For he has given a symbol of her in many high names, saying, Come out of your garden, O choicest aroma. Hail to you, O virgin, the right and true queen. Hail to the pride of our race, who bore to us Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, so our faithful and full can be for our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. Seven archangels praising as they stand, before the Pantocrator, serving the hidden mystery. Michael is the first, Gabriel is the second, Raphael is the third, a symbol of the Trinity. Suriel, Sedakiel, Sarathiel, and Ananiel, the great and holy luminaries, entreating him for the creation. The cherubim and the seraphim, the thrones, dominions, and powers, the four incorporeal creatures, Carrying the throne of God, the twenty-four presbyters in the church of the firstborn, praising him without ceasing, proclaiming and saying, Holy God, heal the sick, holy mighty, O Lord, repose us who are asleep. Holy immortal, bless your inheritance. May your mercy and peace be a fortress to your people. Holy, 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 O Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. And when they say Alleluia, the heavenly response saying, Holy Amen, Alleluia, glory be to our God. Intercede on our behalf, O angelic armies, and heavenly orders that he may forgive us our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ has chosen his apostles, Peter and Andrew, John and James, and the rest, Philip and Matthew, Bartholomew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Canaanite, Thaddeus and Matthias, Paul, Mark and Luke, and the rest of the disciples who followed our Savior. Matthias, who was chosen in place of Judas, all of them and the rest followed the Master. Their voices went forth throughout the face of the whole earth, and their words have reached the ends of the world. Praise to the Lord on our behalf, O my lords and fathers, the apostles, and the seventy-two disciples, that he may forgive us our sins. O Mark the apostle and the evangelist, the witness of the passion, of the only begotten God. You have come and enlightened us through your gospel and taught us the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You brought us out of darkness into the
the true light, feeding us the bread of life that came down from heaven. All the tribes of the earth were blessed through you, and your words have reached the ends of the world. Hail to you, O martyr, hail to the evangelist, Hail to the Apostle, Mark the Beholder of God. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, O Beholder of God, the Evangelist. Mark the Apostle, that he may forgive us our sins. You received the grace of Moses, the priesthood of Melchizedek. You received honor from our father, Mark who preached to us. Christ lifted his right hand on your head. He gave you the keys of the kingdom of heaven that you may govern over the church and that you may shepherd your people in purity and righteousness. As it was said by Paul the Apostle, as was Melchizedek, so also is Christ. Likewise, we magnify you with David the psalmist. You are the priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Praise to the Lord on our behalf, O oh, my Father, the Patriarch, our Holy Father, Abba Tawadros, that he may forgive us our sins. Praise to the Lord on our behalf, our Holy Righteous Father, Abba Yusuf, a Bishop, that he may forgive us our sins. Watch over us from on high where you dwell, O Lady of us all, the ever-Virgin Theotokos, Ask of him whom you have bore, our good Savior, to take away our troubles and grant us his peace. Hail to you, O Virgin, the right and true Queen. Hail to the bride of our race who bore to us Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, so our faithful advocate before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. We glorify you, O Saint of Theotokos, for you have brought forth unto us the Savior of the whole world. He came, he came and, saved and saved our souls. Glory be to our Master, our King. Christ, the pride, the pride of the apostles, the crown of the martyrs, the joy of the righteous, the firmness of the churches, the forgiveness of sins. We, we proclaim the Holy Trinity in one Godhead. We worship him, we glorify him. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, amen. We believe in one God, God the Father, the one of God's Lord, creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God. We got not created of one essence with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, of the Virgin Mary, and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and is buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures. He sits at right hand of his Father, and he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. Who spoke by the prophets and one holy Catholic Apostolic Church? We confess one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to Passion upon us. Amen. Amen. 
لساس کی پاس هل پاس From us, visit us with your salvation and forgive us our sin. And Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Christ, our God, who said to his saintly honored disciples and holy apostles, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. May we be worthy to hear and to act according to your holy gospels through the prayers of your sins. Pray for the holy God. Lord of mercy, remember also, O our Master, all those who have been in us to remember them in our supplications and prayers, which we offer up unto you. O oh, 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 oh Lord our God, those who have already fallen asleep, repose them, those who are sick, heal them, for you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection. Let them exalt him in the church of his people. A psalm of David say, Alleluia. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Ayar, give ear, O God of Jacob. Blessed are those who dwell in you, your house. They will still be praising you, Ali. hear the holy gospel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord of hosts. Bless, O Lord, a reading from the holy gospel according to Saint Matthew the evangelist and the pure disciple. Glory to you, Lord. Our Lord, God, 
Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. Amen. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than this is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sow you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Glory be to God forever. Let us worship our Savior, the good one and lover of mankind, for he has compassion on us and has come and saved us. Intercede on our behalf, O Lady of us all, the Theotokos, Mary, the mother of our Savior, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, O my lords and fathers, the apostles, and the rest of the disciples, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, our Holy Father, the Patriarch, Pope of Atawadros, the Archpriest, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, our Holy Righteous Father, Abba Yusuf, the Bishop, that he may forgive us our sins. Blessed be the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Let us pray. And up for prayer. Peace be with you. Again, let us ask God the Pantokra, Atur, the Father of our Lord God and Savior. Our Jesus Christ, we ask and 
entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your one only holy Catholic and Apostle. O the peace of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church of God. Lord have mercy. This which exists from one end of the world to the other, member, O Lord, our patriarch and father, the priest, Pope, our daughter, the second, and his special brother, the patriarch of Antioch, Mary, from the second, and his partner is Apostolic Liturgy, our Father, the Bishop of Iusif. Pray for Archpriest Pope Abbato Adrus II, Pope Patriarch and Archbishop of the Great City of Alexandria, and his spiritual brethren, the Apostolic Liturgy, the Patriarch of Antioch, Mark Natissa from the Second, and his partner in the Apostolic Liturgy, our Father, the Bishop Abba Yusuf, and for Orthodox Bishops. them secure for us for many years and peaceful times. Remember, O Lord, salvation of this your holy place and every place and every monastery of our looks further. Pray for the salvation of the world and of the city of ours and of all cities, districts, islands, and monasteries. And every city and every country and the virgin of the adornment and save us all from famine, plagues, earthquakes, jam, and fire, captivity by barbarians, the sword of the stranger, and the rising up of heretics. The waters of the rivers this year to bless them. Pray for the rising of the waters of the river this year, that Christ our God may bless them and raise them according to their measure, that he may give joy to the face of the earth, sustain us the sons of men, save the cattle, and forgive us of our sins. Lord, Raise them to their measure according to your grace. Give joy to the face of the earth. May its furrows be abundantly watered and its fruits be plentiful. Prepared for sowing and harvesting, manage our life as deemed fit. Bless the crown of the air with your goodness for the sake of the poor of your people, the widow, the orphan, the traveler, the stranger, and for the sake of all of us, who entreat you and seek your holy name. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness, O you who give food to all flesh. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness, that we too, having sufficiency in everything, Always may abound in every good deed. Lord, have mercy. The Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, our assembly. Pray for this holy church and for our assemblies. Lord, have mercy. Grant that they may be to us without obstacle or hindrance that we may hold them according to your holy and blessed will, houses of prayers, houses of purity, houses of blessings, grant them to us, O Lord, and to your servants who will come after us forever. The worship of idols utterly uproot from the world, Satan and all his evil powers, trample and humiliate them under our feet speedily, 
the offenses and their instigators abolish. Let the dissensions of corrupt heresies cease. The enemies of your holy church, O Lord, as at all times now also humiliate, strip their vanity, show them their weaknesses speedily, bring to naught their envies, their intrigue, their madness, their wickedness, and their slanders which they commit against us. O Lord, bring them all to no avail. Disperse their counsel, O God, to disperse the counsel of Ahithophel. Lord, have mercy. Arise, O Lord God, let all your enemies be scattered, and let all who hate your holy name flee before your face. But let your I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In Christ Jesus our Lord, before you, O Lord. with your spirit. O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son and Logos of God the Father, who has broken every bond of our sins through his saving and life-giving message and life-giving suffering, who breathed in the face of his holy disciples and saintly apostles and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. They also now, our Master, through your holy apostles, have given grace to those for a time labor in the priesthood in your holy church to forgive sins upon the earth and to bind and to lose every bond of iniquities. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, for your servant, those who bow their heads before your holy glory, dispense unto us your mercy, lose every bond of our iniquities. If we have committed any sin against you, Knowingly or unknowingly, through anxious of heart, or in deed, or in word, or from faint-heartedness. O Master, who knows the weakness of men, as a good one and lover of my God, O God, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. Bless us, purify us, absolve us, and all your people. Fill us with your fear, straighten us under your goodwill. For you are our God, and glory, honor, dominion, and worship are due to you together with good Father, Holy Spirit, now and forever, and the age of the ages. Amen. Man, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Bible study tonight from Psalm 56. 
Each son has a title. So the title of the son is to the chief musician set to the silent dove in distant lands. A mishtam of David when the Philistines captured him in Gath. So according to the title, the author is David. Also, the title indicates that it was directed to the chief musician. So some scholars said the chief musician is the Lord God himself. So David is offering this God, the psalm to God. Other scholars said the chief musician is the leader of the choir of the musicians in David's time like he means a singer or a saf. Then he said to the silent dove in distant lands. Some believe that the silent dove in distant lands was the tune to which this psalm was sung. But other connect this with the theme of the sun itself. Thinking it represents a dove in trouble. Then this dove is silent. And this dove, because in the trouble, migrated to distant land, away from the trouble. So David was in trouble when he was captured by the Philistines. And maybe they would kill him. So he tried to run away in distant land to hide. Also the dove is a symbol of innocence. So David may be compared to a dove for his innocence. Then in the title, it's written a Mitch Tam of David when the Philistines captured him in Gath. Some said Mitch Tam means golden. So like a golden composer of, of David, golden composition of David, golden uh, song by David. When the Philistines captured him in Gat, this evidently refers to the event recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 21 from 10 to 15. When King Saul was chasing David to kill him, and David did not find any place to hide, so he went to the Philistines to be with them And he met King Achish. But the counselors of the king told him, no, David is not, com uh, David is not coming to hide here. Did you forget how he killed Goliath? Did you forget how many wars with the Philistines he, he killed them? He is here to spy on us that he may kill us. So they wanted actually this conspiracy against David and they wanted to kill him. So this event when David escaped from the hands of the Philistines, particularly from the hands of Achish, king of Gath. This psalm is composed to describe the feeling of David when driven from home. He's driven away from his city, his home, like a dove went to a distant land and compelled to seek a place of safety in a remote region, like a dove driven from
from its nest. So the whole title is a description of David as an innocent an uncomplaining sufferer, silent dove, uncomplaining sufferer among strangers. The Psalm 34 and this Psalm, the titles are almost identical. And they were written about the same period in David's life when he was captured by the Philistines. Also, the psalm can be des can describe as a lament with a strong emphasis on trust in God and praise for His word. So, it can represent any one of us when we are in trouble or affliction, and we cry to God to deliver us, but with a strong emphasis, as we'll see in the psalm, on trust in God and praise for his word. This psalm is an expression of personal experience, David. Also can be expression and prayer of a nation in exile. So if a whole nation was taken captive, they can pray this psalm the psalm can represent to them. Also, the words of the psalm apply to the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ was like a dove in his innocence, meekness, humility. But he was also like a silent dove. As we read in Isaiah 53, verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened the not his mouth. So he was silent, silent dove. He was silent before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, when his enemies accused him. And Pontius Pilate told him, are you going to give any answer about this? Also, he was silent when the Roman soldiers mocked him, slapped him on his face, and reviled him. And when he was led to be crucified, he did not open his mouth. Also, this psalm can represent the Holy Church, which often called a dove. The church is silent under all afflictions and persecutions by the ungodly wicked men. The words of this psalm also may be applied to any truly gracious soul. Soul who is innocent and humble as a dove and living among ungodly men and is afflicted by them, yet patiently bears all that is said and done to it. Silent dove. This psalm is a short psalm, only 13 verse. In verse 1 and 2, we'll see earnest prayer. 3 and 4, David declares his confidence in God. 5 and 6, a description of the wickedness of his enemies. 7 and 2, 9, David pleads in earnest hope. 10 to 13, Confidence in God declared again. So let's start with verse 1 and 2. Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day. For there are many who fight against me, O Most High. O Most High, in other translation, goes like this. For there are many, many prideful people who fight against me. So, in the original text, the word 
can be translated as referring to God or Most High, or can refer to the people in their pride and how they exalt themselves. Actually, the Arabic translation goes about this word refers to the people, not God. لَأَنَّ كَثِرِينَ يُقَاوِمُونَنِي بِكِبْرِيَاءِ Many who fight against me with pride. That's the Arabic translation. But both meanings are correct. And I will address this uh, in the commentary on this psalm. So David begins the psalm by describing the severity of the attacks he is suffering. He was in great and constant danger from many enemies. He said, for many, there are many who fight against me. The many enemies are the Philistines and also King Saul and his servants. So he cried out to God, knowing that the divine help could rescue him from any man-made threat. And he appealed to the mercy of God, for with men he could find none merciful. That's why he said, be merciful to me, O God. David pleads, bleeds, not relying on what he may or may not deserve. He did not say, because I delivered your people from Goliath, so please deliver me now. No, he is not pleading based on his worthiness, but he beseeches the grace and the mercy of God. And the description here when he said, for man would swallow me up, fighting all day, he oppresses me. Swallow me up, they are like wild beasts rushing upon its prey. They are pursuing him across the wilderness and are pressing their attacks on David all day long. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. Also, this verse we can take it in a spiritual way, in our spiritual warfare. When we feel that the old man that was buried in baptism and the lusts of the flesh are continually fighting against our soul and oppress our soul and bringing our soul into captivity with many bad habits, and threaten to swallow me up. And sometimes the warfare is all day. He said his enemies are many. In this situation, his own followers and friends were very few, but his enemies were many. This reminds me also of the Lord Jesus Christ during the time of the trial and uh, crucifixion, everyone ran away and he was alone. David encountered enemies wherever he went. David's enemies trust their great numbers and they thought of themselves to be much superior to him. As I told you, the word can be translated into pride. So they thought they are superior to him. On earth, David was greatly outnumbered. So he looked for help from God who is enthroned above. And if this word is translated almost high, as if David say, God, from your highest place, you watch and see all things. 
you see their plans, their conspiracy, and you can easily disrupt and demolish them. So the psalmist pray that God will prove his own supreme exaltation, O Most High, against these self-exalted boosters. We as believers, if we apply this psalm on us, also we have many enemies, Satan, sin, world, the temptation of the world, seeking to devour and to destroy the person, although they cannot as long as we are in the hand of God. Verse 3 and 4. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Beautiful verse. Whenever I am afraid, what I should do, I will put my trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? And I want you to, to see the switch. In verse 3, he said, whenever I am afraid. But after he put his trust in God and his promises, the promises of God in, in the word of God, that's why he said, I will praise his word. There is a switch here. He said, I will not fear. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? All the day, David, who killed the lion and the bear, David, who killed the Goliath, David, who was a successful young leader in Israel's army, did not deny the presence of fear. He said, when I am afraid. There were many times when he was afraid. So here David is expressing his vulnerability. David was not a booster and did not hesitate to admit that there were times when he was afraid. Yet he knew very well what to do with that fear, to boldly proclaim his trust in God despite the fear. I will trust in you. Yes, he is afraid, but knows within himself that he doesn't need to be afraid because he trusts God and he has God on his side. Then he said, I will praise your words. I, in God, I will praise your, his word. Why? God is unchangeable. And God is faithful and true to every word of his promises. And that's why there is great reason to trust in him and not to be afraid. He told us, I am with you all the days unto the end of the ages. Don't be afraid. I will never leave you or forsake you. These are the promises of God. Therefore, he puts his confidence in God and will praise his word. Because in these words, he knew the promises of God. His trust in God was directly connected with the word of God. Because in the word of God, he got these promises. So his trust was not a blind hope. It was based on God's revealed character and revealed promises in the scripture. Trusting God has given David, the momentum toward even greater faith. 
He was afraid. Then he put all his trust in God while he was afraid. Then this trust took David to a higher step. I will not fear. I will not fear. So this trust in God removed all the fear from his heart. Like if a person has problem in, in work and then he met his boss and the boss told him, I will take care of this. Immediately the fear will be gone. That's what happened with David. Also we need to notice that faith brings forth praise. I will praise your word. In God I have put my trust. This is actually the essence of this song. When we are in trouble or affliction, put your trust in God. In all dangers, in all troubles, whatever happens, whatever seems to be approaching, the Psalms will never cease trusting in the Almighty. David realized that with God for him, it doesn't matter what man or men may be against him. He said, I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Flesh means human being. What can flesh do to me? This is actually the true spirit of the martyr. When the Lord told us in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in him. Verse 5, all day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather together, they hide, they mark my steps when they lie in wait for my life. So after David reached a very high place in his faith. He said, I will not fear. David now returns to the urgent reality of the present distress. David said all day long to show the rebuking duration of what David is enduring. In verse 5, he said, all day they twist my words. And in verse 2, he said, my enemies would hound me all day. So David is using all day to show what he is enduring. The assault that David is receiving is not deserved. What did he do to deserve all this? And what are the tools that his enemy is using? They twist his words to give reason to attack him more. And this is a common way of warfare among the ungodly. Even with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Jews twisted and changed the word of Jesus Christ to catch him by a word. When they went to Pontius Pilate and said, we heard him. He said, I will destroy this temple and build it again in three days. So the attack against David were not only violent, but they were also deceitful with the twisting and rephrasing of his words and intentions, seeking to give his word an evil meaning. 
All their thoughts are against me for evil. They are entirely determined on doing him some hurt. And it did not stop at planning evil against him. But the thoughts of the wicked turned into meeting in secret, plotting to harm him. As he said, they gather together, they hide, they mark my steps when they lie in wait for my life. They gather together, they don't attack him alone, but they unite their forces against him. They hide. Wicked, evil men are weak, coward, and rich. They mark my steps. They watch him constantly. They spy so that he can never be sure that he is not watched or stopped. His many enemies constantly plotted against David for evil hoping to lie in wait and kill David with a surprise attack. Nothing would please the wicked men more than the death of the righteous. Godly men are wise, seeing that they have many crafty enemies and seeing their own danger, they place the whole case before the Lord and put themselves under divine protection. Verse 7, shall they escape by iniquity? In anger, cast down the people, O God. You number my wandering. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? When I cry, cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know, because God is for me. So starting from verse 7, David is appealing to God's justice. It wasn't right for these wicked enemies to triumph over David. He is wondering, shall such inequity at this, go unpunished or escape righteous judgment and the punishment of God? Shall they escape by iniquity? That's why he prayed in anger. Show them by your intervention and by preventing the success of their plans that they are under the divine authority and justice. And wickedness does not establish security for them. Cast it down. They are exalted. They, are, they exalt themselves. In verse 2. So cast down. This is opposed to their present exaltation and triumph over David. Cast down to their hopes and confidence of safety and success. In anger, cast down the peoples, O God. So the wicked may prosper and succeed, yet their success will not be sustained. In this period of David's life, he was completely alone. This made him value the sympathy and care of God even more. And he found great comfort in the thought that God noted his misery. Every step David has taken 
when pursued by his enemy, was not only watched, but thought worthy of counting and recording. When he told him, you number my wandering. So every step, when I am running away from my, my enemies, you watch them and you number them. And I want you to compare verse 8, you number my wandering, and verse 6, about the enemies, they mark my steps. So they mark his steps to kill him, but God is numbering his steps. So while the wicked mark the steps of the righteous to plan to harm them, God watched the righteous during his wandering and collect his tears as a deposit of glory prepared for him. He told him, put my tears into your bottle, as if his tears like wine. And David is saying to him, store it in a bottle. So by a bold figure, God is said to collect and treasure his tears as though they were precious wine. He trusts that the Lord will be so considerate of his tears as to store them up as men store the wine. And he hopes that the place of storage will be a special one, your bottle, not just a bottle. Put, the, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? God records the trouble and tears of his believers in his book as events, as events that preoccupy his heart. Sometimes when we are in trouble, we feel that everyone left us, forsake us. But if we remember that God put our tears in his bottle and record them in his book for our glory, to give us glory for all these troubles that we endured for his name. That's why David said, are they not in your book? This expresses strong confidence that his tears would be remembered. They are recorded. They would not be forgotten. All the tears that godly people shed are remembered by God. If the tears are properly shed, shed in sorrow, without murmuring or complaining, they will be remembered for our good. When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. So the psalmist felt that he had only to cry unto God. That's all what he need to do. And this will secure the overthrow of his enemies. The certainty that God is on his side is the ground of his assurance that his enemies would be scattered. He said, this I know. Why? Because God is for me. God is on my side. God is for me. The powerful, fervent, passionate prayer of the righteous avails much against their enemies, as we read in James chapter 5. David is so confident that God will answer his prayer, and he gave a reason, because God is for me. This was the ground of David's confidence. He knew that God was for him and would answer his prayer for rescue. St. Augustine has a beautiful comment here. He said, a great knowledge. He does not say, I have known that you are God, but you are my God. 
Of all things, indeed, God he is. But for those godly men, God, peculiarly, he is said to be, that love him, that hold him, that possess him, that worship him, as though belonging to his own house, that the word God is for me means we love him, we hold him, we possess him, we worship him. Well, St. Augustine says, the great family of him are they, redeemed by the great blood of the only son. How great a thing has God given to us that his own should be, we, we should be, and he should be ours. We are his own and he is ours. Then the last four verses in this psalm. Verse 10, in God I will praise his word. He's repeating what he said before. In the Lord I will praise his word. So for the second and third time in this psalm, David declares the greatness of God's word. Why? Because this was how he knew that God for him. Actually, in Isaiah 42, God said, You are mine. I know you by your name. So from the scripture, David knew that God is for him. That's why he said, I will praise your word. So this was not just a wish or a hope. It was well grounded. Because God said it in his word. David will firmly depend upon the promise for the sake of him that made this promise who is true and faithful. In God, I have put my trust. He's repeating again. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Repeating again what he said before. I will not be afraid. Having thus put his trust in God, he looks with a holy contempt upon the threatening power of man. St. Paul puts this triumphant word into the mouth of every true believer in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? What can man do to me? The sentiment in this verse is the same as verse 4. But in verse 4, he said, what can flesh do to me? He, here he said, what man can do to me? Verse 12, vows made to you are binding upon me. O God, I will render praises to you. So the psalm ends with an expression of thanksgiving and gratitude to God for the deliverance. Although the deliverance did not happen yet, but David is speaking about deliverance in the past tense, as if it happened from his trust and confidence in God. So David was so confident that this uh, deliverance will happen. It's expected. It's looked upon as assured. That's why even he spoke of as past. David, under his affliction, he made vows to God. And now vows he made promises of thank offering if God would come to his aid and save him from his enemies. Because now he is so sure that God will deliver him, that's why he said these vows he considered be, to be due now and himself to be under the obligation of paying them. Vow made to you are binding upon me. 
I will render praises to you. So they were, they were debts upon him he ought to pay off. But what are these vows? He said, I will render praises to you. Which explain what he meant by his vows. These vows, sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. Verse 13, last verse. Now he is explaining why he will give sacrifices of praise. For you have delivered, notice in the past tense, although he's still in the trouble. For you have delivered my soul from death. Have you not kept my feet from falling that I may walk before God in the light of the living? So, the psalmist view, view his entire deliverance as accomplished already. God delivered him from imminent danger of death when in the hands of the Philistines. Also, in a spiritual way, we can say this may include the deliverance of a soul from spiritual death in which all of us by nature as we read in Psalm 51, was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. So after every repentance and every confession and every communion, we need to say, for you have delivered my soul from death. And then he told him, have you not kept my feet from falling? Why God kept his feet from falling? that I may walk before you, before God, in the light of the living. Walking before God means walking in his sight, walking in the fear of God. God sees and knows all heart, thoughts, words, and actions. Walking before God means to do the will of God, to do what pleases God. We read, about Enoch, he walked with God, means he actually did the will of God. And as St. Paul explained in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, when it was mentioned about Enoch, he walked with God, means that he pleased God. And why God wants us to please him? Simply because this is for our benefit. It's not just for him to be exalted more. It's for our benefit. That I may walk before you in the light of the living. What does it mean in the light of the living? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. It is to walk as the children of the light and to walk in the light of Christ. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. St. Augustine says, therefore, brethren, to this end, let all these things serve us, that God freely we love, in him hope always, neither man or, nor devil fear. So when we hope in God, when we love him, we will not fear man or devil. Neither the one nor the other does anything except when it is permitted. No one can touch us unless he gets permission from God. And why God may allow something, permit something like this? Permit it for no other reason can it be, except because it does profit us. As I told you, why God wants us to please him? Because it will profit us. Even when God allows us to go into trouble, at the end, it will profit us. Let us endure evil men. Let us be good men, because even we have been evil in the time of non-repentance. St. Augustine continues and says, 
even as nothing God shall save men. So God, for saving us, it doesn't require for him to do يعني, anything by a word of his mouth. Of whom we dare to, to despair. Therefore, of no one let us despair. Don't fall in despair. If you trust in God, you will never fall in despair. For all men whom we suffer, let us pray, St. Augustine says. For all men whom we suffer, let us pray. From God, let us never depart. Don't depart from God. Our patrimony, let him be, let him be our father. Our hope, let him be. Our safety, let him be. He is himself here a comforter. There a rewarder, wherever maker alive. And of life, the giver. He is the giver of life. Not of another life, but of that whereof has been said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. In order that both here in the light of faith and there in the light of sight, here we see God by faith. When we go there by sight, in this light, as it were in the light of the living, in the sight of the Lord, we may be pleasing. So, to summarize this quote, St. Augustine said, don't depart from God. Let him be everything in your life. He will comfort you. He will bless you. He will make you walk in life because he is the life. And he will give you life because he is the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here on earth, you will walk in the light of faith. You believe in him. There in the light of sight, when we go to heaven, we will see him. That's, that's the meaning of the word, the light of the living. In the sight of the Lord, we may be pleased. This concludes chapter, uh, Psalm 56 from the book of Psalms. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of the ages. Amen. We proclaim and say, O our Lord Jesus Christ, bless the water of the rivers. May your mercy and peace Save us and have mercy on us. You have received the grace of Moses, the priesthood of Melchizedek, the old age of Jacob, the long life of Methuselah, the excellent understanding of David, the wisdom of Solomon, and the spirit, the paraclete, who came upon the apostles, May the Lord preserve the life and rising of our honored Father, the Archpriest Pope of Atawadros, and our Father, the Bishop of Ayusif. May the God of heaven confirm them on their thrones for many years and peaceful times. May he subdue all of their enemies under their feet speedily. Pray to Christ on our behalf that he may forgive us our sins in peace according to his great mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. Bless me. Bless me. O the Matanya, forgive me. Say the blessing. Christ our God. Amen. So be O King of peace, grant us your peace, establish for us your peace, forgive us our sins, for use is the power, glory, blessing, and majesty forever. Amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven.
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever amen. Now, love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, communion and gift of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. And with your spirit. So we're grateful to have his grace, Bishop Yusuf, and Buena Felixinos blessing us uh, this weekend. Uh, I would love for everyone to come and get the blessing of his grace, uh, and then we'll be, we'll, afterward we'll begin the midnight prayers and praises. Matins tomorrow will begin at 8.30 a.m., uh, and then we'll begin the Agbeya prayers at 9 a.m. You guys can come up.